welcome all my friends in TV land. This is Senior Issues, etc. I'm your host, Vita Verdon. And, you know, I listen to what all my friends out there in TV land, what, what you write me, what you email me, what you call me on the phone about, and I listen also to my guests. Now, this young man that I've got as a guest today, I've been trying to get a hold of him, and we've been playing phone tag now for well over a year, going into the second year. And here on the show, and I know like all your hearts out there, uh, we honor the veterans, we honor the fire department, and we honor the police department because these men are laying down their lives for our protection and we always don't see them all in an honorable light. Now, we're gonna find out what he's all about and what it's like to be a day in the life of a sergeant on the Libertyville Police Department. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> it took him a long time to practice how to say his name and he wrote it down phonetically for me. It's Sergeant uh, Chad uh, Roscoe, Roscoe, Roscoviak. It's Chad Roscoviak, that's correct. Roscovi Roscoviak, Chad Roscoviak. Have I got it? You got it, you got it. God bless you, welcome to be on the show, Chad. Thank you for having me. Now I know that what they'd like to know about you is a little bit about your background. So if you look right into that sure. camera there, and you could tell us a little bit about your background. Sure, I grew up in the city uh, in Chicago. I'm uh, one of 15 children uh, that my mother and father had. And, uh, after 15 children? 15, yes. My, what, what were yeah. you in the number? I was engine number nine, running nine. down Chicago line. So, 15, yes, that is yes. a big family. Big family, big family. Um, after, uh, after I graduated high school in the city, what uh, high school did you go to? Archbishop Weber High School. Oh, I know where yes, that was. Yes, yeah. so it's on the northwest side of the mm -hmm. city. Uh, fond memories of, of uh, Weber, right. uh, which is uh, closed now. Yeah, it had a very good reputation. Yes, yes and it, it did when I was going there as well. Um, after I got out of high school, I decided to go to service, and I became a paratrooper with the 82nd Airborne Division. Oh, that's something. I was, I was Airborne Infantry, and uh, I spent three years uh, uh, you know, uh, doing uh, doing a proud uh, service, uh, you know, for my country. I have a fond respect for uh -huh. our military uh, men and women that uh, decide to, uh, you know, offer their service to the country to protect us and give us the freedoms that we have today. And I'm very greatly appreciative of uh, those, my forefathers in the past and currently those that are presently in, in the military. After I got out of the service, um, I, I, I did a little bit of school, but then I uh, got the uh, job offer to be a police officer with Libertyville Police Department. How did you get the job offer, may I ask? Well, I went through the process of testing uh, and uh -huh. going through the exams. You have a physical test, you have a written test, and uh, you do interviews. And after the interviews, you, uh, you get on a list. And uh, eventually, I was, uh, I, uh, my number was called, and uh, I was offered the job at uh, Libertyville. And uh, shortly, uh, you know, that, that happened in 1998. I've been on the, par the uh, police department for 16 years. Um, during my time in the 16 years at Libertyville Police Department, uh, I've had the opportunity to uh, work as a uh, narcotics gang officer, and I did that for five years with oh. a uh, state police task force. So I'm still employed by Libertyville, but my services are, 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 are uh, dedicated to this task force, and I would work uh, the Lake County for uh, you know street level uh, uh, type uh, narcotics pushers and, and, and uh, also uh, gang suppression, that's what I did. Uh, after that, I, I came back to Libertyville in, in uniform and then shortly thereafter I found myself assigned to the investigations department. And, uh, and what does that include? Well, that includes. What does that cover? That covers everything. Uh, Libertyville is a small. It's a small community, so it's not like Chicago PD. So uh -huh. uh, your investigator has to have a, a, a an understanding of all all the crimes that could occur because you're the one that's investigating. So, what, regardless if it's a burglary, 
if it's a uh, if it's a robbery, if it's a battery. It's because it's theft. small, it's not specialized like Chicago. They correct. Have, they, have they have one person that works. Departmentalized. That's I got correct. It. That's correct. So I did that, and I did that for about eight eight and a half years. Well, before we go any deeper, I want to, because I know how they are out there. They're up. They they get nosy. Uh, are you married? I am married. I I have a wife, and I have uh, three children. And and yesterday was Mother's Day. I love you Look very right much. Look right in that camera. And you know, on this show, we don't give little pecks. We give big smack roonies like that. Okay. Right in that camera. So my wife and uh, my lovely wife and uh, the mother of my three children and all the kids, God bless. I love you. Good. That's good. Okay. Now let's get back to, uh, we were talking about investigating. Correct. Okay. So yeah. let's hop back into that. Sure. Uh, so. Now, well, first of all, uh, uh, let's go a little bit into when you say investigating, could you give us a little explanation what you mean by that? You go into the background of what's happening? Yeah, sure. What happens is uh, if there's a, a complaint that, that's initiated, a crime, say a, 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 someone, a, a burglary to a house or okay. to a car, uh, the, uh, the patrolman that's working at the Pacific District or BEAT uh -huh. will take the initial complaint, get the information. And then after that, that patrolman then passes that case on to the investigations department because the patrolman's got to go out and he gets the first initial response. He has to go back out and still service the rest of the community. I so see. the investigations department then takes the case, and if there's leads to follow up on, uh -huh. a way to investigate that crime, uh, whether it's processing of uh, fingerprints, looking through pawn shop records, trying to find the items that were stolen. Uh, calling up your contacts that you have. We have great contacts and uh -huh. a great rapport with our other uh, municipalities and, and law enforcement, and we, we talk and we try to we try to uh, uh, do our best to solve and, and uh -huh. find out who's responsible for that crime. So that's what an investigator does, uh -huh. and it could it could you know uh, it goes into the the wide variety of uh, credit card fraud and you calling up the credit card company, getting information and backtracking backtrack and getting video surveillance of the offenders. All kinds using, of fraud. Yes, yes. Now, uh, when were you promoted to be sergeant? I was promoted sergeant about a, uh, a year and a half ago. Uh -huh. um, and uh, uh, as a sergeant, I'm a relief sergeant uh, slash investigative uh, okay. investigation so sergeant. So relief sergeant means that you take somebody's place. So you have to be like jack of all trades. If it's a night shift, you work a night shift. If it's a day shift, you work a day shift. If it's the middle of the day shift. That is correct. So I'm flopping all <laughs> over. And uh, it, it, it's okay, though, because I get the experience, uh, you know, I get the, I, I'm fortunate to, you know, to work a shift with all the guys on the department because, you know, it's, it's shift work. So I'll get a chance to work. And midnights. so then you work with a variety of men. So you really have to, it keeps you on your toes. You're challenged all the time. Correct, correct. And it's, there's different, there, you know, different times, there's different things that are occurring. Uh, second shift, there's a lot of, car accidents and a lot of walk-in reports. Same thing with the first shift, whereas as midnight shift, you're gonna deal with a lot of uh. disorderly conducts or, or uh, you know, uh, DUIs, et cetera, uh. there on the street. Now, when I don't do relief that, sergeant. That, that first shift, would that be like the night shift? Is th that, that's the midnight shift. The, the midnight, midnight shift. shift. Correct. So that's when you get, like, a lot of drunks and things like that, right? You'll get the folks that are uh, getting behind the wheel and, and drinking and driving uh -huh. when they shouldn't be. Uh, they're a danger uh, not only to themselves, but to those that are also driving the street lawfully. Uh -huh. And our, our job is to make sure that the, tr the streets are safe. And uh -huh. so our midnight shift guys, they're, they're a great, great group of, uh, of guys, and they go out there and they make sure that the streets are protected. Absolutely. Uh -huh. So now you you don't ride by yourself. You You have somebody with you? No, I do ride by myself as uh, as the as the uh, as the shift commander. I'm uh, I'm in charge of the shift, so I keep myself. Uh, I have my own car, uh -huh. and, and I will drive around and, and I'll uh, I'll respond to various calls depending on what they are. And my my job in, you know, is to make sure that the you know uh, that the men on the shift uh, 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 their needs are, are met. That I get I could offer them whatever I could do, and then to make sure that they're safe. Uh -huh. and that they get home every day. So. Uh, and now I know that uh, you're, the, the line that you're in, you probably deal with other sur suburban uh, police and so you have to cooperate with each other, right? Yes, we do. We have a, we have a great rapport with our, our neighboring communities, uh, you know, Mundelein, Vernon Hills, uh, 
the Gurney, Grays Lake, and, and Lincolnshire as well, but uh, even I'll, I'll, I'll pass them. Uh, yes, we have to work together, and we do a lot of things together. Uh, our rapid deployment training for our schools, uh, we go through drills to make sure uh, should something happen at our school that uh, we're working one on one, you know, in unison so we could, uh, you know, help each other when needed. Uh, so. Say, if you're on a chase and you go over the uh, boundary of Libertyville mm -hmm. and it goes into another community, so whose jurisdiction takes over? The community that it's in? Well, that, that community will have, if there's violations that occur within the community, they are sure, of course, they could go ahead and pursue charges, but you're the initiating agency, so you will be able to, uh, you know, have, have uh, your charges for what occurred in your jurisdiction. We, t you, know, uh, you know, chases are very dangerous. Uh, uh, it, it, there has to be a lot in play you know, for, you know, for order us to have a, 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 a vehicle pursuit. We, we, you know, we frown on, on doing vehicle pursuits. Uh, you know, but uh, there, there's some parameters that have to be met in order to do that. Well, you know, um, I'm going to have my little pearls of wisdom now, but when we come back, I'd like us to open up the scams. Great, and, absolutely. You know, we have to go into that. All right. Uh, now, you know, I always try to bring you some tips, and I know that you've heard me say this, but you can't hear me say this enough. We spend a lot on vitamins. We go out, we have the ingenuity to check with our doctor on what vitamins, and you know, this is an important tip. Just don't take everything over the counter and think it's harmless, because even over the counter and vitamins you take could interact with your prescription medication. So your doctor uh, needs to prescribe for you exactly what vitamins and how much. And the thing that I am stressing to you is that vitamins always need to be taken with some sort of food or else the only thing that you're vitamizing is your toilet because it's just going to run right through you. So be sure that you take it with some kind of food. That's my one tip. Now we've come into actual spring and the beginning of summer. and. I have a plate in my leg. You all know that. You've gone through it with me. Okay, this I picked up cheaply at Walgreens, but they're available all over. And what it is is a folding cane. And actually, I can s slip this into a bag. I can actually slip this into my big purse. And as I take this out, see, I'll show you what happens. See what happens? It straightens right out, and it's a nice cane because when the weather starts raining and things like that and you're on uneven ground all you need is one heavy fall for you to for it to drop down and for you to crack a hip or break your femur like i broke mine in a hundred pieces so be sure to pick something up like this i think i paid less than twenty dollars for this so you can't afford not to have one take it with you. Don't be so proud that it's better to be safe than sorry. And I'm, I'm really grateful for all the letters and all the communication that I get. And I want you to, if you want to see old shows, just go on to our website, which is Seniors Issues Etc. Etc. is etc. org. And you scroll down on the first page of our uh, website is a link, and the link will be into the shows, and uh, it, it will be the latest show. Like if you go on, uh, the, this show will go up today or, t or t tonight or tomorrow, but early this week. Now, Chad will be the last show that's seen and on the police department, but if you scroll down, they'll be in order, and I think at this time, there's about 30 or 35 shows online. And you could uh, find us on Facebook, and also there is a blog on uh, what the current show is about. So contact us. I'll also give you my email. My email is vita, V-I-T-A, Verden, V-E-R-D-E-N, at netzero.net, and I'm going to give you my telephone number. Some of you, shame on you, you're not tech savvy. 
where I, how I got tech savvy is I went to the library. They're very nice and the lessons are free and every library has it. And so uh, my telephone number is area code 847-573-1233. Now let's get back to our good looking policeman. Okay, <laughs> now why don't we get into our scams? I know there's so many of them. Now, uh, the first thing I wanna do is a little promotion on you. You know, he goes a lot around speaking events. So if you're interested, call the non-emergency number, which is the number that will be listed, and you can contact him. And uh, Absolutely. He, he will come and speak on these things uh, at a senior center or an event that you're having. That's correct. All right, now tell us, because uh, we're concerned because you know we want to do the right thing but some of these things are so slick you can get caught up in them you can you can and, and there's there's so many and and it's unfortunate that uh, the criminals out there pry on the vulnerability vulnerability of our of our uh, senior citizens and and uh, I do my best to go out and try to educate and, and, and hopefully prevent this from happening and there's right. so many there's a wide range of, of scams that, uh, that that our seniors fall victim to, and I, I'm happy that I could talk a little bit about this with you. I'm too. Uh, one of the scams that's very, very uh, popular is the grandparents' telephone scam. Yes. Okay, and that's, that's you know, what that scam is, is uh, there'll be a phone call placed to the residents, and the person, the bad guy on the line will pretend to be a, a, a relative, will pretend to be a grandson, okay, or a granddaughter. And they'll say, I've been hurt in a car accident in, in, uh, in another country or another state, and I need you to send money for to pay for my, my hospital bills. Uh, another one would be, I've been arrested in Canada, and I need you to send money so I could get a, uh, a lawyer so I could get out of jail. And they ask some questions, and they, the, the, they're hoping that they'll get a name, okay, yeah. from, from the person, on, the grandparent on the line. So what I tell you, what they want is money. So they'll try to say, I need money. So they'll, they'll ask you to get some money and they'll go, they want you to go to a Western Union or to a MoneyGram uh, and give them money through, through, through one of those uh, type of things. Nowadays too as well, they, do a, they have a green dot card where you could buy this card at Walgreens, put on a various amount of money, and then when you call them or they call you back, you just give them the card number and then they have the, uh, the money that way. So How did they redeem that? Well, just by typing in that card, they get that card number. It's like a credit, giving your credit card number over oh. the phone. Okay. Oh, it's like a credit yes, card. Yes, it's oh, exactly. So that's it's, it's the green dot. Slick. So it's very slick. So that stops. All right, your, let's say that again. It's called the green dot card. It's it's a green dot card, and you can okay. find them at, at 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 any of your local you know uh, stores, in particular Walgreens. Uh, uh, the, you know, I never heard Jewel, of that. But they, but they have them. So what what do you what do you have to do to prevent that? Okay. okay. Number one. They're going to try to get on the fact that, hey, I don't want you to call mom and dad. I'm embarrassed. And they're uh -huh. going to try to get you to trust them and, and have the confidence that you're going to keep this quiet between, between you. Wait, this is my advice to you. If your grand, grandson or granddaughter is calling up saying they're in trouble and they need some money, what you need to do is hang up to say, okay, let me, I'm, I'm busy right now. I'll call you right back. Let me see what I do. Hang up and call up that grandson and call up that granddaughter at the number that you have or call up your son or your daughter at the number you have, do that, and if you you know, and and make sure uh, validate. But this scam comes in blocks, okay, and that's one of many. But I want uh -huh. I know we don't have a lot of time to talk, but so I want to move on to another scam as okay. well. Okay, uh, there, there's the roost. Well, uh, but I just want to ask sure. a question. When you say this scam comes in blocks, what do you mean in blocks? Well, I mean they target the area at a specific time. So let's say in in uh, in June, and I'm not saying this is going to happen, uh -huh. but they'll they'll, they'll they'll pick or I find that we'll have like 10 or 15 reports see. in so my at community. So the same in, yes. time, the same community. Correct. Oh, you Correct. get that, how slick they are? They are slick, they okay. are slick. Okay, so, all right, so go on. So to protect yourself, verify that your grandson or granddaughter are in trouble okay. by hanging up the phone and calling them. That's all right, what you, you have got to do. that, that's okay. Another one's the roost entry burglary and that's the, a distraction type theft. So what happens is someone knocks on the door and they pretend they're from the water department or they pretend they're from the city electric company or they're pretending they're buying a house next door and they want to make sure that they're not going to dig on your flowers, okay? And I know I, I have a garden and I like my flowers, so I'm going to, oh yeah, I want to make sure my garden's going to be okay. So what they do is they, they want to get the, their victim 
away from the front door, okay, uh -huh. and into the backyard. And then they have two or three guys waiting outside, and they come in through that unlocked front door that you now left open, okay? Uh -huh. And then they go, they know all the hiding spots, and they rummage, they take all your prized possessions, your cash that you have behind the book or in the book, your jewelry that's up there, and then they leave, and they're preying on the fact that you don't, number one, pick up that you've been a victim, and that your memory is not as fresh as it, as it was, okay? So this is a very terrible scam. So what can you do to prevent yourself, all right? Uh, they'll drive around the street and they'll look, they'll pick out elderly folks. See, their targets are elder, elderly folks. So if you're outside doing yard work, you have an overhead garage door, close the garage door, okay? Lock your doors if you're doing lot, uh, yard work. Lock your front door, lock your back door, okay? If someone comes saying they're from the water department, uh, or they're from the, you know, they bought a house, they want to, there's some down wires, okay? Uh, verify that. Say, okay, hold on one second, all right? And you call up the water department. Keep the door locked. A lot of folks at home, they have a uh, screen door, all right? And what happens is they, they open up that screen door, that, which is locked, and they just walk in. And the person's, the, the victim's following them through the house, and they're taking them to the back. And they're like, hey, I didn't tell you to come in, but they're walking, hey, I need to try this, I need to try this. So, my advice is lock that screen door, okay? Do not let that, you know, keep that locked because now they can't get in, okay? And uh, uh, um, once, it, 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 keep your phone with you if you're coming to the door. Always, I, I, tell, I tell the senior citizens, keep your phone with you because uh -huh. you never know if you're gonna have to call. So if you, a lot of times you have the cordless phones. Uh -huh. So walk with your cordless phone and you know, uh, that you can verify if they are. Or you can uh -huh. call 911 if you think there's something uh, going on. And there's always a common, uh, there's 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 a common thing not just with the Rusa entry burgers that uh, you don't want to bother the police. Okay, uh -huh. bother us, call us if you're not sure about something. We want you to call us so we can investigate and verify. We ask, I ask you to do that. Please call. Um, so Rusa entry burglaries, lock the screen door, close your garage door. What do you call that, Rusa? Rusa entry. So Rusa means distract. That's correct. You keep that in mind. Roost is like one hand's over here when they're doing something over here. They're keeping you up here. You got it? Remember that. This is Remember. important stuff. Or they'll say that your son sent you over to look at your roof for some repair roof. Uh -huh. and, and, and they'll, they'll throw out a name. Uh -huh. Okay. So if you didn't ask for someone to repair your roof or seal coat uh -huh. your driveway, because they'll do scams that way as well, they'll inflate the price of the driveway. They'll say, hey, uh, I'll do your driveway for $300. So then they, they grab some cheap caulk and they fill up the cracks and they say, okay, now you owe me $3,000, okay? And now you feel obligated because it's not a contract uh -huh. and they, they're, you know, they're, they're pressuring you to pay the money. So that's another, another one of these, these type of scams that, that, that could occur as well. So if uh -huh. you didn't order for, it's a home repair fraud scam. Uh -huh. So if you didn't call up anybody, be very uh, be uh -huh. very cautious. So they actually drive around neighborhoods they where they see elderly people. They do. That's a terrible thing. You know what? What we have to do is they're trying to fool us. We have to show how sharp we are. Keep these gray cells going and be alert to these things. That's the best way. Be alert and have and, and also tell tell your friends. Uh, we're here. This is great because I want to uh -huh. get the word out of what you can do to prevent uh -huh. yourself from becoming a victim. Um, moving on to some more more things that I see or that we investigate is when you go grocery shopping and, and you have your purse in the cart, okay? Uh -huh. And what they do is another distraction, all right? They'll ask you, they'll, someone will ask you about this item, or if you cooked with this, or can you can you help me, you know, w with this, or what do you think about this? Get your distraction off. Then they go and they steal your wallet out of your purse, and before you know it. Your, uh -huh. your information's already out on the street, whether you have a credit card. So there. don't leave your purse in in the car. Keep it with you. So if someone's going to talk you, to you, your hand on yes. it. with your hand on it. I know it's oh, hard. These are good things. These are good things you're telling us. Great, and and also going back to the the grocery store. Uh, when you go to the grocery store, you're going to fill up. You're going to push your cart out to the car. All right, and then what happens? You take your groceries, you throw them in a the car, and you leave your purse in the cart. Uh -huh. So when you got someone that runs by, grabs the purse and, phew, and uh -huh. off they go. So I would suggest that the first thing you should do is take your purse, if you don't keep it on you, put uh -huh. that in the, in the car uh, on the floor. First. Okay, first, close that door, then load up your groceries. Did you hear what okay? he said? If you're going, put your purse in the car first. Don't make it be the last thing for someone to come and snatch it. That's correct, that's correct. 
Another scam that's very popular is the lottery scam. And once you get a call about you won the lottery, but you know, in order for you to collect, you have to pay a certain amount of taxes uh -huh. and you're gonna become a millionaire. So, but if you're gonna become a millionaire, why do they want you to pay the taxes? They would just take the money out of there right away, okay? Uh -huh. So don't fall victim to, to you know, I, I call those lottery scams, uh, 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 it's a phone call. Hey, you won a million dollars. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, great. This is the great, great, greatest uh -huh. thing in the world. I get a lot of that on email. Yes, you'll get that on I email. I get it Correct. from Ni from uh, Africa, Nigeria, from yep. England, yep. from India. I got them from all over. The best thing you could do is just ignore those emails. Delete it. Don't even open it up. Don't okay. open. I don't ever open anything because if mm -hmm. you open it, what they can do is get in your computer and you can get a virus in your computer. That is correct. And, and the, or they'll do a phishing scam and it, there, there's all kinds of things with the internet uh, that they could do to get your personal information. So yes, do uh, not open it up. If you don't know who the person is, delete it, okay? Uh, now reference the, reference the phone calls. They'll call you and once they have your phone number, it's, they're gonna pass it on to their buddy who passes it on to their buddy and they're always gonna try to contact you. So how do you prevent that? You know, one thing you could, you, you could answer the phone saying that's all right, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm already rich, I don't need any money and hang up uh -huh. the phone on them, okay? Uh, or you just, you could change your phone number every now and then to a different number even though uh -huh. it's hard because all your friends know what your phone number uh -huh. is. But that's the only, only real way to prevent uh, the, uh, the unsolicited phone calls from coming in or well, caller ID. One of the things uh, that I hold on to is uh, there's so much solicitation for uh, uh, contributions mm -hmm. over the phone. Correct. And I tell them, I don't do anything over the phone. Send me a letter. Great. That's great. So that I, and, mm -hmm. and I just stick to that. I mm -hmm. say, no, this is how I do it. Send me a letter. That's great. That, that is exactly the, a, a great way to, to, to end their solicitation uh -huh. right there. Um, uh, there's, there's, the, there, there's, there's so, so many things that uh, these criminals you know, do or, or prive on, and you'd be surprised how much money they've taken from our senior citizens uh -huh. in regards to these roost entry burglaries or, or these lottery scams or the grandparent scams. I've worked cases where on a grandparent scam someone gave away $9,000. Huh. Of, of their own money. And they went to the bank three times because after they called them once, they called them again saying they ran into another problem. They need more money. So uh, out of all of this, all, 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 the, all the scams that's going on, I just ask you, if, if you're in doubt or if you're uh. not sure, okay, please call a relative, on, uh, uh, you know, call and ask that grandson call with the number you have or call the mom and dad. Say, hey, I haven't heard from, uh. Uh, you know, Johnny today. Can you have him call me? I want to ask him a question. Uh -huh. And you know, and then you're not breaking that confidence that this guy, if you think, but they're, it's not. They're, they're they're scamming you, and they're hoping they're going to get to your, your your good side of your heart. All right, now uh, if if somebody has had this happen and they want to call in the uh, police department, there is a non-emergency number, right? There's a non-emergency number, please call us, and we want to come out and talk to you, okay? We want okay. to get your information as well, okay? It's, it's very hard to track this type of crime and recover the money. I tell you, you know, because if it's going through Western Union, you get a number and anyone could pick up that money uh -huh. with that number in any state, any any country, as long as you got that number. So it's very hard to, to track, so. So then uh, your advice to us, Sergeant, is, uh, that spread the word. Spread the word. Spread what the you word. Ha I have heard today in this show, tell at least five people. Great. Now, we could go on and on. I'm going to have him back periodically so he could keep us abreast. I'm so happy that we finally connected to have him on. And do you know when you come to the end of your rope, you know what I want you to do? Tie a knot and hang on. You know why? because the best is yet to come. And what we want you all to do this week is to catch the spirit. God bless you, we love you.